for survival after being separated from her twin sister. From the newsroom, this is Channel 9 News Weekend with Reg Wells, Sarah Lee Kessler, George Lindsay Young's weather, and Bill Vargas on sports. Good evening, everyone. I'm Reg Wells. Sarah Lee is off. In Brooklyn tonight, police are hunting for a potential serial killer. He's being called the 9mm Madman. As Robert Miller reports, his deadly actions are generating a lot of fear. I just look out for myself when I come home, you know, and stuff. I, my friends drive me and stuff, you know. She's reacting to a series of shootings, apparently with the same 9mm gun, including the August 12th attack in her apartment building, where a man was killed and a wounded woman was given emergency help by a passing rabbi. Two days later, just a few blocks away, a man was killed in this building. Another man was wounded a few doors away. What we are planning to do in, like, in the next week or two is get a, a little protest, you know, the people to come and march through the communities. At nearby Bergen and Buffalo, that same day, two men were shot and killed. Ex-Marine Thomas Johnson, the father of two, was one of the fatalities. How do you try to survive in an area like this? What about carrying a weapon yourself? I mean, no sense to carry. If you carry a weapon yourself, you get stopped. Then you go to jail for trying to protect yourself carrying the weapon. So the best thing to do is just try to be aware of everything around you and go about your business. Police from several detective units have teamed up to work on the case. The perpetrator is described as a male, black, in his 20s, 5 foot 10 to 6 foot, stocky build, medium complexion, very short hair, armed with a 9 millimeter automatic pistol. The New York City Police Department, incidentally, has decided to introduce the 9mm to its personnel in order to not be outgunned by the criminal element. In one shooting, robbery was the apparent motive. There is no known reason for the others. In Crown Heights, Robert Miller, Channel 9 News. And police have arrested a suspect in another shocking murder. The victim was the father of 12 children. Police say he was gunned down by a teenager who demanded his wallet. Polly Kreisman has more. Guns is around us. You can't say nothing. Can't be surprised. The easy access to guns in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn is no consolation to the 12 children of Jose Duran. Tonight at funeral services, the family, including Duran's wife, was joined by hundreds of members of Brooklyn's Dominican community. Police have charged 17-year-old Rishon Fields, who lives here with the shooting death and attempted robbery which occurred in full sight of two of Duran's children looking out their apartment window. Ten-year-old Jose Jr. was one of them. He says he, he loves his father, you know, but he's missing a lot. He misses his father. I wish that they would bring him here, handcuffed, to see the one he killed, like they've done before in some killing. Why don't they bring him here for he could see what he did? We never expected something like this to happen. And it's just, you know, it's just terrible, I mean. And the, the thing that makes me feel so bad is that, you know, it was a 17-year-old kid that did this. The man is 17 years old. Uh, they should stop the, the selling guns in the street. In the projects where the shooting took place, one teenager sees it differently. Not my age, no. Well, maybe 19, 18 years. Why? To protect themselves when they're in the project. It seems like a world away here on the east side of Manhattan where Duran worked at this restaurant as a dishwasher for $350 a week. The customers here this week raised $5,000 to pay for the funeral. Ten minutes before he left, he was joking with him, with me. I give him a little glass of wine, the bottom of a bottle from a customer. Ten minutes, I come next day, they say to me, he's there. I couldn't believe I know how many kids he has. Andres Duran was the murder victim's brother. He worked at the restaurant first, then sent for Jose in the Dominican Republic. I feel very sad about that. Maybe it's better uh, live over there because now he died. All the, the babies no her father now. In Brooklyn, Polly Kreisman, Channel 9 News. Now, basketball superstar Michael Jordan also lost his father in a robbery that turned deadly. The Chicago Bulls star participated in a celebrity golf tournament outside Washington today. Before playing golf, he spoke to reporters for the first time since learning of his father's death. It's tough for anybody to swallow, not just my family, any family that has this type of circumstances to deal with. But I think uh, we're, we're pretty strong and we're moving forward with our lives. Two teenagers are accused of killing James Jordan in his car 
during a robbery. Tonight, the controversy is growing over accused Nazi death camp guard John Demyanyuk. Congressman James Traficant and John Demyanyuk's son-in-law, Ed Nishnik, tonight returned from Israel and their fight for the release of the retired Cleveland auto worker. Yesterday, the Israeli Supreme Court gave Demyanyuk's opponents two more weeks to make their case that he should be retried on charges he was Nazi death camp guard Ivan the Terrible. Because of the great shadow of the Holocaust, it's not unbelievable that this would continue to happen. I think the Supreme Court of Israel is giving the opposition every opportunity because of this highly supercharged case in Israel. So although we're disappointed, it's understandable. A panel of U.S. judges says that if he is freed by Israel, Demyanyuk should be allowed to return here to help with the appeal of his 1986 extradition. But the Justice Department is fighting that ruling. The issue 15 years ago was John Demyanyuk, your Ivan the Terrible, prove you're not. And we proved that he was not. And now the everyone in the world forgets about Ivan the Terrible, and it's John Demyanyuk, you're guilty of something else, prove you're not that. Rather than try to come up with more assertions against him, they ought to focus on bringing Ivan the Terrible to justice and, 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 and let this man alone. 16 years is enough. Meantime, City Comptroller Liz Holzman has been fighting to keep Demyanyuk from returning to the United States. She says he lied about his past when he came here after World War II. Rodney King had another run-in with the law today. He was arrested on charges of drunk driving. Police say King crashed his car into a wall. Nobody was injured. Police say King's blood alcohol level, however, was more than twice the legal limit. Police later released King on his own recognizance. Up later tonight, the father of those Siamese twins talks about the emotional roller coaster his family has been going on. Also, doctors say they now know what is wrong with Mother Teresa. And swimmers take to the murky waters for a race around Manhattan. But no muddy water in the weather lab. Here's George Lindsay Young. Indeed, Reg. What a great way to start out the weekend. 83 degrees and breeze, and it's just going to get better. Now, how about that 7 a.m. wake-up weather forecast? Here it is. Sunny and pleasant temperatures at 7 a.m., middle to upper 60s range. Now, coming up in just a bit, why you may need a blanket tonight, plus tomorrow's weather scene. And now, here's Bill. All right, George, I bet the temperature is hot at the Meadowlands tonight because bragging rights are at stake as the Jets and Giants meet. And the Yankees continue their campaign for first with Cam and Nicky on the mound. Can they do it? The answer, and maybe a few more bad puns, too, later in sports. Preferred seating proves you can get the highest quality furniture at the lowest prices and guarantees it. Look at these leather sofas. Only $550, $599, $799, $899. Great quality at the lowest prices, and the furniture is guaranteed for as long as you own it. Spectacular eight-way hand-tied coil spring sofas, just $5.99 each. Preferred seating, the lowest prices and best guarantee. That's value. Right here on Channel 9. The separation of those two Siamese twins has meant joy and pain. And tonight in the Philadelphia hospital, seven-week-old Angela Lakeberg is in critical but stable condition. Her sister Amy, however, did not make it. She wasn't supposed to. Their father described how he and his family have felt since the surgery. Doctor gave us this little chance, this less than one percent chance, and here we are with this little baby, you know, with her eyes open. I mean, uh, I feel great. I'm overwhelmed by it all. But then on a sadder note, of course, we lost Amy, you know, which is, which hurts. The twins had shared one heart and liver and stood no chance of survival while still connected. Doctors say one of the girls had to die for the other to have even a slim chance. Hostages in Nicaragua and doctors discover what's wrong with Mother Teresa. Those stories and more in tonight's World Watch. Nicaragua. Two rebel groups continue to hold dozens of hostages, including the country's vice president and 33 lawmakers. Negotiations with the government are underway. The State Department is offering big bucks for information about suspected terrorists. Advertisements will offer up $2 million for information in the World Trade Center bombing and the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103. Relief supplies are getting into the Bosnian town of Mostar. Conditions are described as completely desperate. UN forces say 55,000 people are near starvation. 
Mother Teresa is listed in stable condition tonight. Doctors in New Delhi say she's recovering from malaria. The Nobel laureate turns 83 next week. Tonight, the Justice Department is investigating computer software giant Microsoft. The investigation involves allegations of unfair competitive practices. The announcement comes right after the Federal Trade Commission decided to drop its investigation of Microsoft. The president is getting into the swing of things during his vacation on Martha's Vineyard. Today, he hit the golf course with Vernon Jordan. Some people had noticed a red splotch on the president's face. He said it was just a mosquito bite, all part of a vacation. Coming up later tonight, Bill has all the latest sports. That's Bill Vargas, including the Giants' jet showdown at the Meadowlands. If you stay with us. We've just lowered the monthly payments on the 1993 Chevy Lumina to fit your family budget. Sure could use a car this big. Can we afford it? It says here it's just $1.99 a month and only $17.75 down. It's even got air automatic. Ahoy, mateys. You needn't sail the seven seas to find adventure. Just chart a course for me Pirate's Cove at the land of make-believe. I am wanting your whole crew to play aboard me ship. Then explore the amusement park just off the port bow. So bring your preteens for a day of adventure. Everything you need to be a kid again is at the land of make-believe. For a day you'll always remember, it's the land of make-believe in Hope, New Jersey. Temptation leads Capone into a dangerous affair. We will mess with people together forever. On The Untouchables. Monday at 9 on Channel 9. People who get their sex education from 900 telephone numbers may soon have a better alternative. The Masters and Johnson Institute plans to open a 24-hour sex hotline. Dr. William Masters says the goal is to answer people's questions, not to do phone sex therapy noticed you were sitting on the edge of your seat. I guess it's because of the Yankees. And Yeah, it's the Yankees. It's got nothing to do with 900 numbers, let me tell you. A royal win for the Yankees, and they are now back on the throne. As they take the field at the stadium against the Royals today, the Yanks know they have a chance to move into a tie for first. And in the second inning, Mike Stanley, we want to help you do things right. Hey, I haven't been able to do that one for a while. Stanley's been in a slump, but he bangs homer number 20, and the Yanks go up one to nothing. Bottom of the third, two runners on, Pat Kelly, the Kelly people, the first and the best. Yes, he brings the first runner home, and it's 2-0, and the Yanks are up after three. Top of the fifth, the Royals will get one back, though. Greg Gagne, Gagne with a spoon. Homer's off, Scott Kamenicki, it's 2-1. to one. And then in the sixth, the Royals are going to tie it up right here on Wally Joyner's sack fly. Brian McCray tags and scores. It is 2-2 two two in the sixth as Jim Layrit's throw will be cut off and the run will come in. But in the bottom of the inning, Mike Gallego. Three hits today, including this one, as he connects, and Bernie Williams, who had doubled earlier, comes around to give the Bombers a 3-2 lead, and it stands up for Scott Kamenicki as he watches Steve Farr come on to close it out for the save. Kamenicki the win with eight strong innings. 3-2, your final. Let's go to Toronto, meanwhile, where the Blue Jays host Seattle, but the Mariners not acting like proper guests today as former Yankee Mike Blowers goes down the line off Dave Stewart. Two men home run. It's 2-0 Seattle still. Fifth inning, the kid, Ken Griffey Jr., gets all of it. His 34th of the year, and the Yankees thank him because the 4-2 Seattle win leaves Toronto, and the Yankees tied for first place as you see it there on the scoreboard. Oh, you don't see that, actually. What you will see is Cleveland and Boston. Tie, um, we're tied at five going into the ninth. Cleveland gets five runs in the ninth to beat Greg Harris. Boston, by the way, picked up Rob Deere in a trade today, but it didn't help him. Elsewhere on the scoreboard, Texas leading Baltimore. Baltimore's Mike Pagliarulo with a grand slam off Nolan Ryan early, but Texas has come back to take the lead. The Greg Harris who lost that game for Boston, of course, Greg A. Harris, a totally different guy than the Greg Harris, Greg W., who took the mound for Colorado against the Mets today in the opener of today's doubleheader. Colorado taking a quick lead. Joe and away in the seventh, and it's now just 3-2. And then moments later, Jeremy Burnitz will step to the plate, and he delivers a shot down the line. Jeff Kent will come all the way around from first base on this one. Burnitz winds up on third with a triple. Hey, we are tied. It is three all. But then in the bottom of the seventh, the Rockies will strike back right here. Freddie Benavides at the plate. Base hit. Here comes Vinny Castillo with the go-ahead run off Jeff Innes, and that makes it 4-3, to three, and that would be the final as the Rockies win game one. Now, in game two, the Mets send Bobby Jones, their prized prospect, to the mound, but in the second, Gerald Clark lays a Clark bar on that ball. Two-run shot, 
and it's 2 nothing after 2. And then it's the Clark bar again. Gerald Clark, fly ball to right. Burnitz has it. No, he doesn't. Two runs score. It is 5 nothing in the third. And then the next batter is Danny Schaefer, and he steps right in with another base hit. And here comes Clark. Here comes Burnitz with a throw. It's actually a pretty good throw, but Burnitz, uh, Clark will slide under the tag. It's 6 nothing. The Mets had hoped for a sweep. Instead, they get swept as the Rockies avalanche the Mets today. All right, even though it is a preseason game, there is always a special interest when the Jets and Giants go head-to-head. -head. The big question going into this one, can they take the lead at 10-7? And we're going to be heading on out there after, as uh, soon as we're done with the show, we're going to go on out to the Meadowlands, talk to the players after the game, and have those comments for you tomorrow night. I know you'll be waiting. And outside, I could hear the cheering, and I was outside in Camden. So, I, I mean, they were really cheering in left. Camden. Coming up later, George has the forecast for the rest of the weekend and why there could be a strike on the railroad. Stay with us. There's a strike threat at Amtrak. Thousands of commuters and summer travelers could be stranded. The Transportation Department says union members are threatening to walk off the job on Wednesday over a work rule dispute. And the only work rules in the weather laboratory are... Well, you know what's really amazing? What are you doing with that book? You know what is really amazing, Reg? <laughs> Last night was Brenda's birthday, and today is a big day for you. Yeah. What is today? Today is uh, Saturday, the day before Sunday. And it's Two also Reg's big birthday. Oh. Indeed it is. And to celebrate, I got you a birthday a gift. Cane. A little cane here for you, you know, to commemorate it. And we have... Uh, Does this work as a hook? Well, yeah, you could do that. You could do that. Sure, sure. And unbelievably good deals and great adventures that you can absolutely get if you're over 50. Ooh, 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 ooh. I think I about 10 years for that. But well, that's you. true, but I thought, hey, better now than never. All righty. Thank well, I'll you. tell you what, we got a great day tomorrow. It's going to be beautiful. It's nice outside right now, too. Let's take a look at it. Here we go, mostly clear. Temperature right now at 69 degrees. Humidity nice and dry, 48%. Winds east-northeast at 6. And barometer 30.05, and it is rising. Now, Reg, about that subscription to uh, AARP. <laughs> it's on the way. It's on the way, I promise. Here's the Dare to Say No to Drugs poster from the Channel 9 Weather Lab. Check it out. Woodland School, Monroe Township, Grade 6. Saying no to drugs is like saying yes to life. A terrific poster. Keep them coming in. Well, I'll tell you, it's a winner of a weekend. High pressure in charge of the situation. Last night, a trough, an associated cold front. Bringing a few clouds in here, but it is drifting towards the south. It is down there in Dixieland and completely out of our way. And high pressure now drifting out of the Great Lakes area will mean more fair weather for tomorrow and Monday. So it's going to be a winter of a weekend. Gorgeous tomorrow, bright sunshine, temperatures in the low 80s. Well, here's that cold front which drifted on through. Now down here in parts of Texas, Arkansas, down to Florida. Damage reported in the Little Rock area. Even up in Alexander, North Dakota, nickel size hail. Meanwhile, triple trouble in Arizona, 110 degrees. Lake Havasu City, 24, Truckee, California. And still hot and steamy in the southeast, gorgeous here at home. Here's the details now in the forecast from the Channel 9 Weather Lab tonight. Clear and cool. Morning lows. Upper 50s to low 60s. Put on an extra blanket. Some of the suburbs could be going down to the upper 40s. Yes. Incredible. Sunday, sunny, lovely. High temperatures near 80 degrees. And tomorrow night, clear, comfortable, no problems at all. Morning lows, low to mid 60s. Five-day forecast now. Looking at you Sunday and Monday. Gorgeous. Low 80s, Tuesday and Wednesday, increasing temperatures with a threat of thunder showers and rain on Wednesday. High temperatures then near 90 degrees. And a very, very happy birthday to you, Reg. What did you say? Happy I birthday. I have to turn, I guess I have to change the batteries you. on this thing. Coming up later tonight, the big swim around Manhattan. Stay with us.